Welcome to the Career Ready Podcast. Learn about resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, interviewing, and all the things you need to be career ready with the Career Services Center at the College of DuPage. I'm one of your hosts, Rebecca Harrington. Later in today's episode, you will hear my interview with Sherry Gross, the Veteran Services Manager at College of DuPage. And I'm another one of your hosts, Michelle. I will end the episode with this week's question submitted to our listener mailbag at careerpodcast at cod.edu about how to approach an informational interview. But first, you'll hear from our other host, Pierre Michaels. Thanks, Michelle. I'm going to start our episode today with some information about one of my favorite resources, Career Coach. Career Coach is a workforce database put together by Lightcast. Lightcast is a company that collects data from a lot of different sources on a national level, but they also break it down to regional areas. The information provided covers a lot of data that we want to consider when making career decisions. If you are a listener not in the College of DuPage area, your local school may have a similar resource, but I'm going to talk about Career Coach from a College of DuPage perspective. To get started, go to cod.edu slash careercoach, and this is available to anyone that has the internet. There's no special login required. Career Coach provides a lot of great data for us to process, and we have multiple access points. If you don't know what you want to be doing, you could complete an assessment that measures your interest and how that matches to career paths. If you know what you want to study, you can look at programs offered at College of DuPage to identify careers it may lead towards. If you have a general idea of a career field, you can browse careers by industry. If you know what you are looking for, you can also do a keyword search. In addition to these easy access points, if you are a veteran, you can select the branch you served in and enter your military occupation specialty code. From this search, Career Coach will identify the civilian equivalent jobs most closely aligned to the military occupation experience. Regardless of how you access job titles, Once you're there, the platform gives you a very detailed job description. It will also tell you the typical education level on a national scale for that type of work. Also, the same about tab will provide you with top skill sets employers include in job postings. You can also look at the wage information, and this is going to give you that salary data for the full spectrum of experience levels. In other words, from a research and negotiation perspective, you can see the earning potential for the Chicagoland area. You can also go to the Employment tab, which provides a lot of local data as it relates to different trends, such as employers that are posting the most for this type of work, what is the projection for the next 10 years in our region for this job title. It will also provide other job titles that match up to this type of work. There is also a Live Job Posting tab where you can identify local postings from across the web in a centralized location. If you're ever looking to research career paths, or if you're a veteran looking to identify how your military uh, service translates to civilian terminology, Career Coach is a great resource to help you get started and determine some core information as you evaluate your career path. As I wrap up here, I want to thank all our veterans and military service listeners for their sacrifice that you have made and are making. Now I want to hand it over to Rebecca for her great interview with the College of DuPage Veteran Services Office Manager. All right, everybody. I am here with Sherry Gross, the Veteran Services Manager here at COD, and I am excited to talk to her about job searching as a veteran. So thank you so much for being here, Sherry. Well, thank you so much for having me. So why don't we just start, though? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role here at the College of DuPage? Sure. So like you said, I manage the veteran services team. We are very lucky to have wonderful individuals working um, with our veterans and military connected students here. I've been at College of DuPage for about two and a half years, but I've been working in higher education and mental health with veterans and their families since 2008. And the main role of our office here is to process military education benefits for students. That is the main goal. That's why we were formed. However, we do a lot of social and educational programming around the military. Um, We do a lot of resourcing for our students outside of academics, so housing, child care, mental health, physical health, job searching like we're going to talk about today. So anything that is military and holistic can, can touch our office. Wow, that sounds great. It definitely seems like there is uh, a space needed 
for your services? Definitely. We have about 1,000 to 1,200 military-connected students here any given semester. Wow. So that's, that's a pretty big chunk. And just um, for clarification, I'll note military-connected means in our eyes anyone who is a veteran or is currently serving in active duty, National Guard, or reserve capacity, as well as their spouses and children. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And I was wondering about that because I know I have, uh, I've been an instructor before and I have had active duty um, students in my classes where, you know, in the summer, for example, they might have to go for a week to, you know, do their service and and then come back. So, uh, so that makes sense that you serve all of those groups. Yep. And I will also say the military uh, folks are almost always some of the best students. I'd like to think so. I mean, especially the veterans, they are like, they're ready. They're here. They're (laughs) <laughs> and we'll talk about why in this podcast. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's great. Um, so, yeah, let's go into um, some more specifics then. So what are some of the benefits available to veterans when it comes to finding a job? Sure. So veterans have a lot of both internal to COD and external community programs available to them. I'd like to think that our veteran services and career services staff here are pretty awesome. Um, so it can always work. Right. <laughs> so you can always work with with us and you guys in partnership to both network within the military community and network with employers through career services and chaps get hired and all the great things you guys have going on. Um, There are a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean I have five pages worth sitting here in front of me, but I'm going to tell you about my favorites. Okay. Um, Career services, employment type organizations for veterans. And the first one is one you have to get to early. It's called SkillBridge. And it's a program through the Department of Defense that actually starts when folks are still on active duty. So basically they get into a skill bridge program and their last six months of active duty is like an internship. Oh. So they're still getting paid their active duty pay. They're still at their installation. They still have all of that. But they're working for a civilian corporation in a capacity that they would after they separate from the military. So it's great job and education experience out there in the civilian world while still being kind of insulated by the military, having that regular paycheck, having that health care, and doing all your civilian training before you get out. That's amazing. It's relatively new. Okay. Um, I was going to say, like, how well known is, right. is that? Right. It's, it's relatively new. It doesn't exist everywhere. But the good thing is, is that active duty installations for all branches should have information about this in their career center when they're talking to, I almost said students, when they're talking <laughs> to um, service members about separating and what they're going to do once they get out. Do they want to start their own business? Do they want to go to school? Do they want to go right to work? SkillBridge should be a part of that conversation. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, another one is the Hiring Our Heroes Foundation, which is at pretty much every chamber of commerce in every town in every you know, state in the in the country. So they have a very robust website. They have a ton of resources, and there should be a point of contact, like I said, in, in every town and every chamber of commerce. There's also Marine for Life and Soldier for Life organizations. Those kind of act like a, a bridge to employment, so usually run by a veteran. Marine for Life is run by Marines. Soldier for Life is run by the Army. But anybody from any branch can access either of them, and they basically help you network in your own community, which is super helpful. I will plug a couple of local organizations, if I can, to Chicago before we move on. My favorite being Roll Call Chicagoland. It is a military and veteran kind of networking hub. They meet once a month in different areas of the city and the suburbs so that everybody has access. And it is for veterans and military-connected folks that might not necessarily be job searching but want to work on their networking skills, get feedback on their resume, meet employers and recruiters to kind of like dip their toe in before they go full on job search. So a lot of times they'll have college students come. Um, A lot of times they'll have different focuses. Will it be healthcare folks? Will it be IT folks? Will it be, you know, regular corporate finance? Um, And it's a really great way to not only network in corporate America, but also network with other veterans that have their own networks. Because we all know it's half what you know and half who you know. So if you can get connections in the in the field that you want to be in, that goes a long way for recommendation letters and references and all that. Absolutely. No, I listening to you talk about all these different services, uh, I would say that, like half of them talked about networking. And that's great because, as you just said, it is, you know, you want to think that that little saying of like, oh, it's who you know, like is, isn't true. But it is. It is. So, it is. Fortunately <laughs> it, and unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean, it, at the very least, it's 
if nothing else, it's the way to get the best opportunities. Exactly. So that's those are all fantastic. Uh, do you have any tips for finding military friendly companies? So obviously the networking is is one of those ways, but well, and it is it's interesting because you want to believe that people who have military hiring initiatives and say that they're military friendly really are. Mm -hmm. But again, unless you know somebody that's worked for that company or you can really do a deep dive, it is hard to tell. I know bigger companies like Amazon, for example, have a really public veteran hiring initiative. Um, but it's really doing deep dives on websites, looking at people's LinkedIn profiles that work there. Do they have a military ERG? Um, are they active in the What's an ERG? Oh, it's an employee resource group. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Um, so there can be all different kinds of ERGs. The ones that I know obviously are military ones, mm -hmm. but like um, – Gosh, what's the – there's a finance company that I have a couple of former students that have gone to work for them from my previous institution. Mm -hmm. And they started up an ERG. And oh. it's full of veterans yeah. and military-connected folks. Spouses and dependents are welcome. Mm -hmm. And they meet on a monthly or quarterly basis. They might have lunches. They might have social stuff after work. Some go so far as to have, like, family picnics in the summer. Um, an employee resource group is just a group of people with a similar interest or uh, cultural affiliation, like the military, mm -hmm. that get together and support each other at work. Gotcha. So and would that be something you might find on, like, a company website or on their be. LinkedIn, yep. potentially? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, research then. Research. Right. I think LinkedIn is a great tool as much as it is becoming like the Facebook of corporate America. <laughs> um, it, it is good to research a company both on their official platform and through what their employees are posting and engaging in. That's how you can get a feel for the culture there. And mm -hmm. that's no different with military culture. Sure. And I'm sure just like we, we talk about um, searching for alumni, um, if you go to a company's page on LinkedIn and you go to the people exactly. little tab there, yep. you know, I think you can you could do a keyword search with veteran or mm -hmm. military and, and maybe get some some good information. Um, but I, I'm guessing to going back to the networking sounds like I mean, that's the number one. That's my best advice for everything. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Are there particular industries then maybe or types of companies that are good for veterans to consider, whether they're military friendly or maybe they just the kind of work they do? So I always tell students when they they're not sure what they want to do. We'll, we'll talk about what they did in the military, what their job was there. But also, like, do you want to do something different than that? Mm. Did you really love that? And how does that translate into your civilian career? Um, in terms of specific industries or, like, areas to work in, I don't think there really is one because I think it all depends on interest. And this is just my opinion. Um, the high... Um, amount of veterans in each major that we have here, each program. Mm -hmm. We see a lot in IT, in CIT and CIS. Mm -hmm. We see a lot in uh, police, fire, EMT, mm -hmm. which is pretty typical. And we see a lot in healthcare. Um, I think the leadership training, and I might be jumping ahead to another question here. Okay. I think the leadership training that our military service members receive is unparalleled. Um, and they receive that leadership training and that responsibility at a very young age, much younger than I did um, as a civilian. And that translate re translates really well into any career path. Um, we do – I mean, we see a lot of vets in corporate America too. But again, the concentrations that I'm seeing here at COD and that I saw at my previous institution were um, police, fire, EMT, healthcare, and IT, yeah. which are all – occupations that aren't going anywhere. Absolutely. Well, so. and I was going to say IT and healthcare, those are pretty much the top four, Yep, I would say, most students, at least at our institution. Yeah. yeah. And, and in terms of police, fire, EMT, that can mimic the military a lot in, you know, the the uniforms and the scheduling and the shift work and all that. So mm -hmm. that can be a really familiar path for people to follow as well, mm -hmm. um, especially here at, at College of DuPage. We have a lot of those offerings. So, yeah. Well, I like that your the question you ask is, you know, do you want to stay with the same thing or go, mm -hmm. go somewhere different? Because that's certainly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm a true believer in the fact that veterans and service members can succeed in any career path. They just have to want it. Mm -hmm. And one great thing about being a veteran in higher education is that you're an adult. This is not the next logical step after high school like our traditional students. They have to choose this and they have to want this. And a lot of times there's a clearer picture as to where they want to be when they finish, mm -hmm. which leads to higher motivation in general. Yeah, I, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Um, so I'm actually going to flip around some of my questions just a little bit because you mentioned the leadership parts. So I'm, I'm going to go to the transferable skills, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, we've talked on our podcast about NACE, which is the National College of 
National Association of Colleges and Employers, uh, and they have their um, list of of transferable skills that most employers are looking for. So that could be critical thinking, leadership, or communication, technology, literacy. Um, So what do you think are, I mean, you mentioned leadership then, are there any other key transferable skills that you find? It can be, doesn't have to be the ones I mentioned, just that that you, you recommend to veterans, especially like, hey, make sure that you emphasize this when you're talking with an employer. So it's interesting um, because veterans, they have their own language, right? The military is a completely different culture with its own language, its own acronyms, all of that. So the first thing we have to talk to students about, especially job-seeking veterans, is that you have to be able to translate your military service and your military skills into a way civilians like me can understand. Like, break it down to me like I'm five. (laughs) What does this mean? Sure. Um, So not only do they have somewhat of a language barrier, if you're looking at it that way, Um, I think their ability to operate under stress Mm -hmm. is huge, especially if you're looking at like a healthcare career, Mm -hmm. um, an IT career, someone's hacking your system. you got to be able to do it, right? Right. Absolutely. Um, So the ability to operate under stress, the ability to communicate clearly and effectively in a very timely fashion. There is no fluff in military communication. (laughs) It's very much like this, this, and this, and that's it. Yeah. Um, And then, like I said, the leadership skills, the fiscal responsibility, really. I mean, if I look back, my husband was a 23-year-old under and he commanded over $5 million of equipment. That's interesting. I I had not thought about that. And that's great. They're responsible for so much at such a young age so that that integrity and the responsibility not only for equipment but for people's lives of, you know, the people next to them, that, it, I mean, goes into, you know, being under stress and being able to perform. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely clear, concise communication is the biggest, I think. And it's something that a lot of us work on well into our careers. Oh, absolutely. You know, especially considering, you know, what careers we're in and that shapes how you communicate and how people expect to be communicated with. Um And I mean, in general, just being a good human. So many veterans are engaged in their communities and they want to give back. And I think that um, sense of community and service is instilled in the military as well. Um, It is at its core a service profession. Um, So that, I mean, a lot of times translates into the workforce as well. Absolutely. I, I, those are all great. Stepping back then uh, to my the question I was going to ask before, which is what advice do you have for veteran job seekers on their resume? So obviously those skills you just talked about, those are things they should be maybe talking about on their resume. But uh, but what, what specifically do you recommend? Again, translating it into, into civilian speak is so important. Um, there are actually a lot of military to civilian resume translators out there online that can help you take your job in the military. They call it an MOS. Helps you take your MOS and turn it into civilian skills. So you plug in what the code is for that, and it'll spit out what you know you should put on your resume in civilian speak, and you can tweak it from there. Um, A lot of times a skill-based resume is better than a job-based resume for military, so you want to list those skills out. Um, It really, again, depends on what area you're going into as well. If you're going into something more police, fire, EMT, you might be able to get away with a more military-specific resume. But if you're going into corporate America, you don't want a recruiter or a recruiter bot that searches for words to to look at your resume and be like, I have no idea what this means next. Mm -hmm. Um, So it really is just breaking it down. And I know that our career services can help do that. We have resources in veteran services that can help you do that, whether it be an outside organization or just a good Samaritan veteran that likes doing this on the side. Um, But really, like, breaking down the military language and making it civilian language, I think, is the most important thing. That makes makes a lot of sense. And it's always good to have other people read your resume, so... Many eyes. Many eyes. Many eyes. All right. So what are uh, we talked a lot about networking and you gave us some places, but uh, that they they could go to to network. um, But just what are some good networking tips like that actual like conversation, like approaching somebody and networking, you know, maybe even networking with people with other veterans, but also networking with non-veterans. Right. So, again, I'm going to plug LinkedIn 
I have a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah, but in terms of getting yourself out there in the job market or even just the networking market, I guess, mm-hmm. social media can be huge. Um, going on to LinkedIn and messaging folks or engaging with posts, following organizations and employers that you like and engaging with specific people on their content, um, attending uh, veteran specific things like we talked about with roll call or even veteran events that are for non-employment reasons. Team Red, White, and Blue does a lot of social stuff in communities across the nation. Team Rubicon does service projects. And those organizations like that that are community-based and service-based welcome both veterans and civilians to mingle together to help their communities to help create that connection. And meeting people through groups like that can go a long way in terms of networking as well. Just making, making connections and making friends in your community really Um, Becoming engaged in things like your chamber of commerce can be helpful for folks. Um, Even, you know, going to the library and taking a class, just putting yourself out there, getting a little bit uncomfortable to kind of, you know, prod that end result to be what you want it to be is, I think, a a great idea. And the more conversations you have with people, I I like that idea because it's the more conversations you have with people, the more comfortable you'll start to get with having Mm -hmm. those conversations. And with with veterans, too, a lot of them will talk to their friends. I joke that veterans are worse than teachers in a teacher's lounge (laughs) with how much they chat with each other. And um, keeping into contact with the people that you served with even after you served together. um, One, for camaraderie and being able to reminisce because we all know that that's important. But two, to be able to have that buy-in from another veteran, be like, yeah, I work for this company and it actually is awesome. They actually do what they say and say what they do. Like, it makes sense. You should come check it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's important too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Okay. Let's switch and talk about interviewing. Mm -hmm. So how can you best talk about your military experience in an interview? That is interesting because, again, it's so dependent on what field you're going into and what you did in the military. Um, Let's use my husband for an example. He's used to it. Mm -hmm. Um, He was a Cav Scout platoon leader. Tell me, do you know what that means? No, not I I didn't really either. It just means that he had about 25 guys and some tanks that he led, you know? That's all. Just just 25 guys and some tanks. (laughs) You were just no big deal. Um, and his his first job was for a logistics company. Ah, and he okay. was, you know, doing data and Excel and all that kind of stuff. But what he had to sell was the fact that he was flexible. He could be a part of a team or a leader. He had a lot of experience with data and the people that gave him that data. A leader of people was how he framed it. He didn't talk about tanks. Mm-hmm. He didn't talk about missions. It was very much the core behind the tasks that he did. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah. Um, so, so again, it's being able to translate your skills. And I think for a lot of veterans, especially veterans just starting out and kind of learning how to talk that that corporate way um, or that healthcare way, I don't just want to, you know, call out corporate America. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, it's maybe working with career services mm-hmm. or working with veterans in that field that that did what they want to do. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I was you 10 years ago. Let me talk you through this. This is how this interview will probably go. Um, And utilizing services like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, So are there any questions? I just wanted to kind of flip this a little bit. Are there any good questions veterans should ask of employers at the end of an interview to kind of try to suss out a little bit about this organization to decide maybe is this the kind of place I want to work? You know, what are some questions they could ask? You know, whether it's that phone call with an HR person that's just like a screening call or even if they go in for an interview, you know, what are some things maybe they should be looking for asking about? I would say definitely ask about a veteran employee resource group, a veteran ERG. Absolutely. Especially if that kind of engagement is important to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, just some of my favorite after interview questions are, you know, like, what does a typical day in this position look like? Um, Also, 
depending on whether the veteran is service connected with the VA, that means if they're receiving medical care for specific stuff through the VA, um, what is the time off policy like? What is the sick policy like? Um, again, you phrase it so that you're not like, I'm going to be out sick a lot at these doctor's appointments. <laughs> sure, sure. But um, just trying to get questions that we'll see if they're a culture fit because some veterans are like, I'm coming to work and I'm nine to five and then I'm out. Mm-hmm just like us. But then some people are like, my work is my life. I love this. I'm going to do this all day long. Mm -hmm. Um, If there's ways to engage with their work outside of work hours, do they want to be super social butterfly at work? Do they want to just keep to themselves? Um, What the possibilities of advancement are? What does the career path look like? Because a lot of veterans and military connected people have goals just like civilians do. You know, we're not all that different. Um, And if they're wanting to get in and then make a difference and make an impact, making that known in the interview with, you know, what does my career path look like? What is the plan for this position in one year and five years? Um, Those are all good questions to ask in general, but military folks as well. Yeah, no, that's a good point that I think a lot of the advice that we have had today would apply to anyone. To anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Because even just thinking about, you know, you're talking about translating your skills on a on a smaller level, I, I mean, but but still, we, we get this even with our younger students, maybe that, well, I've worked retail or I've worked at a restaurant, like, but now I'm interviewing for a nursing position. Right, like, how right. do I how do I translate that? Yep. It's it's not quite quite as extreme as far as, you know, the tanks, but, you know, well, it is, <laughs> but, it's, it, but it's still there. Yeah, it's like a career switch. You right. know, it's what anyone would have to do. Um, this is just a little bit on the extreme end, again, depending on what they're wanting to go into. Right. Absolutely. And what they did as exactly. part of their, their yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, so any other tips um, for veteran job seekers that you want to share? I mean, at the risk of saying no, no. Um, <laughs> I Again, I think the, the networking and putting yourself out there and just getting a little bit uncomfortable and making yourself vulnerable to like, learn new things and meet new people is so important. Mm-hmm. That's my mental health professional side coming out. Get there yourself you vulnerable even when you're job seeking. And you'd be surprised what you find, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, and then before we wrap up, what can you share about the Military Connected Career and Internship Fair coming up at College of DuPage on March 16th? Um, just that it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and we have employers from all different fields, healthcare, public service, corporate America, communications. Um, there will be free lunch for attendees. Ooh. Let me repeat, there will be free lunch for attendees. Um, and then we're also going to have military specific resources there. So Road Home Program is going to be there. A uh, representative from Roll Call that I spoke of earlier will be there Um, with his day job at an entrepreneurship program for any veterans that are wanting to start their own business and get a little help. The VA Vital Program will be there. We will also have a representative from Chicago Brigade there, which is another networking organization that was actually started by current student veterans at Loyola and University of Chicago, one of which is a COD alum. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, we'll have a, a lot of different stuff there, a lot of different employers, and it's definitely worth checking out. It is free to attend, and again, free lunch. Uh, right. I mean, you can't you can't say no. And no. and we are also hoping to have uh, free LinkedIn headshots yes. there as well. So uh, lots of lots of good reasons to stop by. And if nothing else, practice your networking skills. Right. Even if you're not ready to look for an opportunity right now. Yep. That's a really good point. You don't have to be actively searching for a job to attend this fair. You want to talk to a recruiter, you want to learn how to talk to a recruiter, shake the hand, do the 60-second elevator pitch. This is the place to do it before you have to do it for real. Yeah, right. And maybe you'll make some good connections that they they might say, okay, come talk to me in a year. Definitely. When you're ready. Definitely. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I know I learned a lot, and I am sure our listeners have as well. You're very welcome. All right. So that was a great interview with Sherry. And I have Pierre with me here to chat about it. You were listening in. Unfortunately, Michelle couldn't be here for this uh, today. But um, so what did you think, Pierre? What stood out to you about what she talked about? I mean, there was a lot of great information in there. So I'm going to go right to the beginning. Something that she mentioned that you guys didn't emphasize throughout because there were some good things that you just kind of kept building on but the holistic approach to the job search. Oh, yeah. Right? That's something that Sherry said very early on. And I think that's something really important for all job seekers to consider. Like you guys said at the end, you know, this, a lot of what we're talking about here can apply to any job seeker, but to look at it from a whole perspective, right? You're not just a job 
you know, seeker, you're a person, you have all these other components going on and wanting to fit that in and identify what is best for you and your situation. I think that's something really important to keep in mind for our veterans, but all job seekers as well. Yeah. I, you know, whenever I talk to people about, you know, career exploration and it, it, I like to say like it's just me, but really in general, most career professionals are going to say, you know, it's about what you're interested in. She talked about that, but it's also about, you know, what what your values are. And, you know, I mean, hey, you know, do you like she I think she said this, too. It's like, do you want a nine to five? Do you want to travel? Do you want to work weekends? Do you want to work with a team? Do you want to be independent? You know, like those are all things that, uh, you know, can be different for everybody. And it's good to kind of explore. Um, and it also sounds like to, um, you know, that they try to provide kind of those mental health resources as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like what are you know, what are some things that job seekers can do to kind of keep themselves mentally <laughs> Like, like in a good place, I guess, while they're doing this this stressful process. Mm-hmm. Stressful process. And when we talk about veterans, major life change, right? When mm-hmm. we think when the people that we meet with on a normal occasion going through a career change, mm-hmm. right? Th- that's stressful. Mm-hmm. Well, now you're going through basically a career change, but that career change is uprooting you from the entire system that you've worked in for the last four years at a minimum, Mm -hmm. right? And so it it can be very um, stressful going through that entire process. So to keep in mind what, is it that you need as an individual, I think is really important. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good point. Uh, what else did you take away from what she talked about? So I don't know how much more we have to talk about it, uh, but the whole idea of networking, building connections, extremely valuable. We know that is a key component in you know, all job seeking. I think that, and this could be very s- difficult for veterans because and you've been off in your own little world. You're not mm-hmm. engaging with people in the everyday civilian world that we're kind of used to. So then it creates this extra barrier of networking without connections and or minimal connections or trying to find people that know people and you know, almost starting fresh, you still have some people to be working with, but building those connections early and, you know, I think she, I was talking about SkillBridge mm-hmm. and that just sounded like a great resource. I have never heard of that before. I'm glad that that's there because that can really help ease that transition process. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think probably also, uh, especially networking with um, other veterans or military connected people is probably also a good mental health check as well, you know, Mm -hmm. just to, uh, you know, get that advice and make sure, you know, you get those lessons from people who've already gone through this process. So um, I think, you know, she made a good point of, you know, be a little bit uncomfortable. You know, it can be, and this is, again, as we say, true for everybody, not just veterans, but like that idea of like, okay, so here's this organization full of people of all ages and backgrounds, and I'm going to walk through that door. (laughs) And talk to people. And, you know, those of us who've maybe been doing this for a little while know that it'll be okay. Like, you know, it, it is scary to walk through that door and start talking to people. But once you do it, you'll be surprised, you know, at how well it goes. And, you know, maybe some people you'll connect with more than others, um, but you just got to do it. Yeah. yeah. And so I just want to throw it out there. If you are a veteran, you see this episode and you're just listening to it. Check out our previous episodes where we're talking about your pitch and upcoming episodes where we're you know, giving advice on how to share your pitch, how to introduce yourself in networking situations on your resume, different components to best present yourself as you're networking. Yeah, great, great point, great point. Um, all right, anything else that we want to connect back with? Yeah, so uh, I kind of want to loop back to what I talked about earlier in the episode and career coach as a resource. Mm -hmm. And we talked about using the MOS on career coach. Uh, Sherry brought that up in the interview. And I think this is something that we really need to emphasize Mm -hmm. because Sherry, who works in this and, you know, sees it a lot, that, that civilian language is different from the military language. And employers, if you're using their terms they're not familiar with, 
they lose interest, right? They don't take the time to connect the dots. They've got a lot of people to process as they go through a hiring process. So to make sure that you as a job seeker are identifying, okay, here's the terms they're looking for. How can I tr translate what I were, was doing in the military into terms that they're going to understand in the civilian world is really valuable. As Sherry said, there's a lot out there. Career Coach, as we talked about at the very beginning, is a very helpful site to do that. And that will also provide um, that additional local data as you go through this process. But this is how you start identifying the transferable skills. Mm -hmm. This is how you start identifying where your background ties into what you want to be doing. Right. You know, so using that MOS just to find the terminology, even if you don't want to do something similar in this next stage of life, you can at least identify, OK, here's how it would be represented in a civilian term. Now, let me take it from this setting and see how it matches up to my desired next step. Right. Going back to those transferable skills, like she said, you know, being able to manage a budget or being a leader, you know, those are things that a lot of opportunities in a lot of different industries would be looking for. Um, and I also want to mention one thing that oftentimes employers will say is job title is one area on the resume that they're OK if it's like if you kind of give give a job title that just makes more sense, that's more universal, <laughs> that isn't necessarily the exact job title that you had, even if it's maybe you put your the military job title, but then like a dash and then you kind of or in parentheses, like, what would this translate to as a civilian, you know, just something that helps them. And then, you know, kind of using that language, you know, you're not you're not lying. I don't know if anyone's concerned about that, but, you know, it's OK to just, again, represent your experience in different vocabulary, um, you know, because you're still you're not you're not changing what you did. Right. You're just it's just how you represent it on there. Yeah, I think, you know, from a civilian standpoint, we see this a lot with IT mm -hmm. tech startups. They give some positions really odd names. And it's like this has nothing to do with the job itself. And. Well, don't put that on your resume because that's not going to mean anything to the desired reader. Put it in a job title that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Same thing here, right? Yeah. It, in the military, it may be called one thing. Well, we'll just change that title, not changing what we did, but we're changing that title so it has a better match to our target audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. Anything else to connect to? No, uh, I think you guys had a lot that you covered in the interview. I encourage people to go back and listen to it again. Yes. There's just a wealth of information <laughs> in there. Um, so thanks for doing the interview. Yeah, no problem. And I will definitely get some links from her and put those in our show notes. So if you're listening to this and you're wondering, hey, how can I find those organizations? Um, definitely take a look um, on your player or on our website uh, and uh, cod.edu slash services and go to the podcast um, and our electronic resources and we'll it'll link you to our, our place with the show notes um, and we'll have a bunch of links there for you. Uh, and so next up, we're going to listen to Michelle answer a listener question. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for that wonderful information. The interview was great. Um, so this week we had one of our listeners ask us, how do I approach an informational interview with someone that I don't know? So this can definitely be tricky, but we're going to give you some guidance on this um, because it can feel a bit awkward to reach out to someone you don't know and really make that connection. So first, let's start with what an informational interview is. With informational interviews, you're learning about a specific topic. So this could be um, a company or an industry you might be interested in. And you're doing this by talking to someone who's knowledgeable about that topic. Um, it's also a great way to network. And the whole point of the interview is for you to listen to a person's perspective or experience and gather that information for yourself. So now that we know what an informational interview is, let's talk about the parts of an informational interview. And the steps that I list out here today, the, these are going to help you feel more prepared, even if you don't know the, the person you're interviewing. So after you find someone to interview, you can do the following. So the first thing we recommend is preparing a list of questions. So really prepare a list of questions ahead of time that's going to help you out um, and ask yourself what information you're looking for, because this is going to help you formulate those questions. So some sample questions, and you can obviously make your own 
alone, but these are just some examples are um, you could ask somebody, what do you enjoy most about your job? What do you find the most challenging? Can you describe a typical day? So continue to add on to that list. Then when the conversation comes about or that conversation day, um, you can start with an introduction. So always thank someone for taking the time to meet with you. That's really important. Um, If someone connected the two of you, also mention that as well. Um, Then you can summarize your background and your skills. So we did talk about your elevator pitch. um, So you can use some tips and tricks from that as well. And really be clear about the information you're looking for. So again, that's where those prepared list of questions will come in handy. Once you get to that Q&A portion, make sure to ask open-ended questions for a better response. So definitely avoid those yes or no questions. Um, Again, as we mentioned, ask specific questions to get the information you're looking for. And then also, um, don't ask for a job directly since this is really a conversation to learn more about the industry that you're interested in. Of course, if the other person mentions a job opportunity, that's fine to talk about it then. And then um, wrapping up that conversation again, thanking that person for their time and asking if maybe there's any other individuals in the field that they would recommend that you talk to. It's always good to continue to network. And also, too, I mean, if they're comfortable and you're comfortable adding that person to LinkedIn to stay in touch. After that conversation happens, definitely follow up with an email, like a thank you email or a thank you card, and, you know, mention what you found interesting during the interview or helpful. Um, I just wanted to see if Rebecca and Pierre, if you had any thoughts. Uh, So I like that you talked about um, that this is, it is a tricky thing to do. (laughs) It's scary to reach out uh, to people. And uh, I think just great advice to say, think about it ahead of time. What's my goal for this conversation? What are the things I want to learn? And making sure you have those questions in mind. And, Mm -hmm. And of course, be prepared to you know, have the conversation go away, go in a different direction, maybe, or you have to follow it up with other questions, but, but kind of having, having some time to plan ahead of, ahead of the interview is a good thing for Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And Rebecca used this word a few times, the conversation. So just kind of changing that perspective because sometimes informational interview, just that word interview in there Mm -hmm. throws people off. If it's that employer, they're like, Oh, interview is like, I'm not ready for an interview or, you know, as that job seeker, the one learning, it's like, oh, I'm going into an interview, even though it's, you know, not a job interview, but just that word can throw people off. So to think of it as a career conversation Mm -hmm. is another way that uh, we could approach it. And that's just a lot less intimidating. So think that you're preparing to have a conversation about careers or present that to the employers as a conversation about your career. And a lot of times they may be a little bit more receptive to that just because the terminology and it certainly isn't as anxiety provoking. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because it can be kind of weird to reach out to someone like a cold call or, mm-hmm. you know, so I love that. A, what, what, what did you say again? A cumber? A career conversation. Career conversation. I love that. I'll use that. <laughs> well, and, you know, because it could, even if it's, well, a friend of the family knows mm-hmm. someone. I mean, even though it's not, that's not called a cold connection, but right. it is, right? Because you don't know them. So, yeah, it, it, it is it definitely don't feel bad if you're a little nervous to do it, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because it is the best way to, I mean, we, you know, we always think about getting a job, right? So Mm -hmm. sure, it can help you get a job. But I think the other part of it is actually exploration, Yeah, you know, which Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we talked about just the idea of, you know, what is, you know, when you're saying like, describe your typical day, you know, what do you like about this? What's challenging? That's you trying to really assess, like, is this something I want to continue pursuing or, Mm -hmm. you know, should I look in a different industry or a different career path? And, you know, you can look into career coach, right, Mm -hmm. and find all the data, the salary data, the what do I do all day data. But really talking to someone that does it for a living is just that next step Mm -hmm. of exploration, that uh, we shouldn't forget about. Yeah, and it's so different. Even when you're going to school for that spe- specific, like to learn something specific about a major or an industry, 
nothing compares to actually doing the job. So Right. And hopefully this will help lead you to that opportunity. Exactly. Well, thanks all. Thank you, Michelle, for that uh, awesome question. And thank you to all of our listeners. And special thanks again to Sherry Gross uh, for joining us to talk about um, veterans and veterans job search. Uh, We hope that if you are in the Chicago area, you can make it to the Military Connected Career Fair on March 16th. And uh, very excited for our next episode. We are continuing the Your Pitch series. Uh, Last time we talked about the elevator pitch. And next time we're going to be talking about the resume summary.